Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we will talk about uh, on deshuttering and uh, the curing, which is very important thing on site. The curing is the most important part, and the deshuttering is also the most important part on site. These are two processes. They are these different two process processes. Shuttering is uh, shuttering is uh, very important. Shuttering is simply it is also called to form work. Shuttering. It is used to form the mold. If we cast something, if we cast the beam, whether it is beam, whether it is slab, whether it is column. So to give to give the proper shape, size, uh, and the dimension of beam, slab, and column, we use form work or we use shuttering to to become a proper mold to have a proper to have a, a proper mold we use the shuttering i mean if this is my column okay this is the reinforcement of my column so what i do first we i use shuttering it may be ply shuttering it may be mild mi shuttering that's mild steel shuttering it depends upon the performance and the uh, and the effectiveness of shuttering so if we use ply shuttering we use it on both sides and then we cast the concrete so it give the proper shape size of the column beam and co or footing whatever it is so this is uh, the little uh, introduction about shuttering so when we apply shuttering then there is the part of the shuttering part so when we have to do the shuttering it's very important thing on site if first uh, we have a very common things on site first we have a column if we talk about column if we talk about footing if we talk about beam okay beam whenever we are using the vertical shuttering whenever i am using the vertical shuttering vertical shuttering if this is my column or this is my column the vertical shuttering on both sides if this is my beam the vertical shuttering on the both sides the minimum time for the shuttering of vertical form work is 16 to 24 hours okay this is the minimum time you got me now it's a very important thing now we'll talk about the what about slab and what about beam okay here we have a term soffit soffit first i will tell you uh, what is soffit soffit it's very important thing if this is my if this is my slab okay the bottom shattering which i use it here bottom is called soffit okay this is called soffit and if if i talk about if here is my beam sam is here if the vertical uh, the i mean bottom shuttering is called a soffit okay what about this soffit and the shuttering of this soffit is if we talk about a slab if we talk about slab the soffit uh, the, the shuttering of soffit for slab is uh, 3 days the minimum days is 3 days and if we talk about the beam the soffit the deshuttering of soffit in for beam the minimum time is seven days after seven days you can remove the bottom shuttering of beam and after three days you can remove the bottom shuttering of slab okay but there is a very important thing which you have to remember if this is my beam if i remove the soffit after three uh, i mean if this is my slab if you remove the soffit after three days what you have to do you have to first you have to so we first uh, remove the props of okay after uh, removing the soffit okay we should refix the props props again okay in both the beams as well as in slab okay this is the, these are the props i mean jack we should refix it we should fix it again after removing the soffit this is very important thing now we'll talk here about uh, the what is the minimum period for if i talk about first beam okay if the span of first we talk about beam if this is my beam if the span of beam is 6 meter then what we have to 
we have to remove the props after 14 days. If the span of beam is greater than 6 meter, greater than 6 meter, okay, this is my beam, the span may be 10, 12 meter. If the span is greater than 6 meter, then we have to remove the prop, props, these are the props, after 14, after, I mean, after 21 days, 21 days. Now we will see here what about what about slab if this is my slab okay it's very important thing so when I have to remove the props for slab if the span of slab is 4.5 meter so I'll show you here if this is my one beam I mean if this is my second beam so this is a slab the span is from end of this beam to the end of this beam that is the span so if the span is 5 4.5 meter then i have to remove the props after seven days okay you got me if the span of uh, slab is greater than 4.5 meter between two beams then i have to remove the props after 14 days uh, we will talk uh, on the shuttering time of column, beam, slab and footing and so on. Okay, So it's based on uh, IS 456-2002. If you go through IS 456-2002 page number, page number 25, you got all these things. Okay, Now uh, IS 456, there are some criteria. The first one criteria is it should uh, we should use the OPC ordinary Portland cement. Second criteria is the curing should be adequate. The curing should be properly done. Okay, it should be adequate in adequate manner. And the third criteria is the temperature should be greater than 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, these are the two criteria which are using in IS 456-2000 on page number 25. You can go through this page talk about curing curing is very important part okay it's very necessary part on construction on our site the basic main purpose of curing is to fulfill the need of hydration you know hydration here we have hydration hydration is simply the reaction of cement and water whatever we are using whether it is our uh, concrete it is our motor we are using cement cement it is a binding material okay it's used uh, for binding purpose if we use it fly as ggbs whatever we are using there is a reaction so we have to complete that sort of reaction if it stops the strength will decrease whether it may be concrete whether it may be motor usually we are using the concrete in rcc walls in uh, in beams in columns in slab in footing in all over the structure so there is a curing thing curing process the curing process is very important okay so the main purpose is to complete the reaction between cement and water. So when we add the water to the seam, to the concrete, there is a hydration process. When we apply the cement or sorry, when we apply the concrete, okay, in beam, in column, in footing, after some time, we have to give the water to the concrete so that this reaction completes. We have to give the water, we have to separate the water. There are various methods of curing. We have to separate the water for curing purpose. Usually for any RCC structure, for any uh, or reinforcement concrete structure, the minimum time for curing is 7 days, okay? Minimum time. If we have slab, the minimum time for curing is 7 days. It's very important thing. It goes up to 14 days, okay? So it's very important thing. If we talk about the beam or column, the minimum time for curing is 7 days also, 7 to 14 days. Now if we talk about our bricks, bricks, we are using the different types of bricks, if we use, a, if we usually we are using the burnt clay bricks uh, on site, so uh, usually, generally we are using this sort of bricks, for these bricks the minimum time for curing is 10 days. So why we are doing the curing, okay, it's, as I told you earlier, to complete the reaction, in, I mean in concrete. To complete the reaction between cement and water. 
so it is the process in concrete when whenever concrete dries it evaporates the water the water in concrete goes outside go out goes outwards so the so uh, the water remains there is very less so we need we have to apply more and more water to continue the aeration so because the water goes outside we can use the usually we can use the gunny bags or, or some polymer or usually we are using gunny bags on site we apply the gunny bags on the slab on the column and separate the water on the ba gunny bags the, so that they remain wet okay the, so that we can uh, we, we can maintain the curing uh, on site okay about, uh, uh, about curing and uh, disrupting time thank you thank you for watching please subscribe and share my channel thank you